Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to make some little miniature hermit crab cakes. Now I'm going to start with the base. This one doesn't show very well on camera but it's actually pale blue so that I don't have to ice it. And I couldn't decide what size to do my cakes so I'm going to use my circle cutters and cut them. So I just baked a slab of cake or a sheet of cake and I think I'm going to start with my biggest circle cutter. I'm just going to make two of these cakes or two hermit crabs. I'm going to want two of this size for each cake and then I'm going to go a little bit smaller and this is going to be like the shell so it's only a very basic shape we're not going too complicated with it just one each of the small ones I'm going to just use a bit of chocolate buttercream where I want them to attach to my board so let's put our first one down there and I think I'll put the other one there now I did actually put these quite close together so if I'd had a bigger board I would have spaced them further apart put a layer of chocolate buttercream on top of each cake and then my le next layer of cake I've decided I want to put a layer of like caramel filling in so I'm going to cut out a hole from the middle of there push that on and we'll fill that hole with the caramel shortly so it's just a little caramel sauce now I should have probably melted it a little bit longer or heated it a bit longer than I did do I'm going to put a recipe below my YouTube video showing you how to make this sauce my small cake I've put a little layer of chocolate buttercream on the underneath and then we're going to stick that on top of each cake just make sure that cake is bigger than the hole that we've put underneath otherwise it will just fall into it just going to round off the very edges of my cakes just a little bit I don't want to take off too much cake and I think maybe I'm going to narrow it a little bit at the bottom like that and I'm going to cover the whole thing in chocolate buttercream when I was doing this I think I should have probably made my buttercream a little bit softer there may be a little bit more butter in my buttercream than what I actually put because it's quite thick so it was sort of pulling my cake crumbs off a little bit so you'll see it's quite messy when I started and I put it in the fridge for a little bit and give it a second coat and this is a cake cloth that I'm using again I'll put links below to everything it's just going to smooth it off a bit now for these ones I'm going to use modeling chocolate just because I like the flavor of modeling chocolate more so I'm going to knead it so it's nice and soft and then I'm going to roll it out just big enough that it covers one of my cakes. So this one I rolled it quite thin and because I haven't got a really smooth surface on my buttercream it is a little bit bumpy on the surface. But I'm going to smooth that down just with my fingers. Where it's kind of folded together at the back I'm just going to cut through both pieces with scissors and then we'll just push it together and you can spend longer than I do on this. So you can just rub down that seam. Anything that goes onto the board past the bottom of the cake, I'm going to trim off. And then the off cuts, I'm going to roll into like a long thin cone. And then we're just going to spiral up the cone. And this is going to become the top of our shell. And I'm just going to stick that onto the top now. If it doesn't just stick on its own, just pop a little bit of water or edible glue underneath it to hold it in place. I'm just going to make the line a little bit deeper between my two tiers of cake. So I'm just using the pointy end of my Dresden tool to push in to get a nice line there. And we're going to repeat the same with the other one. And the second shell, you'll notice it's a little bit lighter in colour. I've used fondant mixed with the modelling chocolate on this one. Actually gave me a slightly smoother look. And I think I'd like to give it a nice bit of an, a gold touch. So I've got an iridescent hint of gold edible powder here. Just brushing it on dry with a large brush, large soft brush. And I'm just going to cover both of these in that. I just think it gives it a nice effect. Then more edible food dust, we're going to use a brown, I've got a slightly smaller brush and I'm just putting a tiny bit between sort of the layers of the shell, basically where there's a crack, where it'd be a little bit shadowed. Now for my sand, this is actually soft brown sugar, it was a little bit dark in colour so I added a bit of icing sugar which kind of made it form little clumps but that's fine because it looks like little pebbles in the sand so I don't mind that. Now to get it to stick to your board you can put a little bit of piping gel on the surface of the board and then we're just going to spoon the sugar on in place. And if you prefer you could use the crushed biscuits instead of sugar. I just had this to hand in the kitchen. And I think I'm going to use these colours for my actual hermit crabs. So one's a little bit more orangey, one's a little bit redder. And again it's just modelling chocolate that I've dyed to these colours. So I think this kind of shape for my legs. So I'm going to roll six of these shapes. And don't worry if they're not all exactly the same size. Mine are getting a little bit smaller in size as I'm making them. I'll try and make them match for the opposite side though. 
and then we're going to go for two balls to start with I'm going to press them down a little bit these are going to become the claws so they're kind of sloped so they're thinner at one side than the other and I'm going to just draw a line where I think I want the claws to go so because it's kind of got a curve in it and that little bit in the middle we're going to cut out with a knife didn't quite cut in deep enough there you'll see it's still a little bit soft because the modeling chocolate once it's been kneaded in your hands for a while it does go quite soft we'll use those off cuts to form a little ball to put on the other side of our claws and I'm just going to place these on here now you can stick them down tight if you're going to be moving the cake around if you're not really moving it about too much you can just rest them in place where you want them also it means I can move them later if I don't like that position because they're not stuck down so I'm just going to put my little legs in place on either side you can see it's quite a tight squeeze between the two shells so I maybe could have left a little bit of a gap so we're going to go with an oval flattened slightly for the head let's draw in a little mouth so a line and then let's pull it down a little bit underneath now the eyes we're not going to put on here we're going to make separate pieces for the eyes so I'm going to go with two teardrops to start with squash the top bit down and these are just going to sit on the top there I'm just adding a little bit of water to the front of my shell it might bring off some of that gold dust a little bit but it's okay because we're going to cover it up with the head can you see I've kind of moved the claws around a little bit to work out where they're going to sit best around this head a small ball of white just pushed into the top now of each of those eyes and then I'm just going to use a pen to draw the pupil in the middle now this pen's running out a little bit so I'll have a go with another one you can paint these on if you prefer you can even stick a ball of black icing on instead just going to stick these onto the shell so that the bottom of the sort of teardrop shape just touches with the head it's a bit googly eyed but that's fine I don't mind him being googly eyed there he is now I'm going to repeat the same for my second one it's going to be a little bit more of a squeeze can you see on that right hand side where I've had to push his legs in tight next to the other hermit crab now I've done my claws in exactly the same way I've maybe made these ones a little bit longer and thinner but they are still made in the same way I'm going to put a little bit of water on these ones to hold them in place uh, this time again the head's the same but I'm going to make him whether more confused or sad face so I'll just use the rounded end of my dressing tool just push that little indentation in just put some water on the back of the head and we're going to push that on so can you see this one I've given a taller face than the other one and I've made the eyes the same way but I've pushed can you see the bottom of the teardrop I've pushed it thinner so it looks more like it's on a stick and then I've taken a circle cut it in half of the orange and we've put that on as little eyelids put a little indentation at the top of the head to fit each of these into on this one now they're a little bit soft at the moment so they're going to move around a bit once they cool down I'll be able to push those in place and they'll stay rigid there they are all finished so there's not a huge amount of cake in this one so this one's ideal if there's not many people at party or if you just want to make something for yourself to eat and for those of you wondering what's going to happen to these cakes these ones are going to be eaten by me I hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching if you like the video be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below you can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.